finally it's that time of the year again when the eclipses have kicked on and there already has been an eclipse on January 6th and now finally it's the last eclipse not of this year it's the last eclipse of the Rahu's transit into Cancer season and Ketu's transit into Capricorn <laughs> so Rahu has recently entered Punarvasu Nakshatra 4th Charan and he is in the beginning degrees of Cancer because we all know Rahu goes retrograde like Ketu also. So Rahu enters in 30 degrees and then it goes retrograde and finally from 0 degree it leaves. Alright, so now Rahu is in the pinnacle of Cancer. Why? Why do I say that? Because now it's the time of the eclipse so on 20th january so some are saying it's 19 some are saying it's 20 maybe some places it's 21st i don't know hopefully it's 20th all right so 20th january there uh, is an eclipse where sun is in capricorn and ketu is also there and Rahu is conjunct Moon in the sign of Cancer. Alright. There you go. So, this is the video about the eclipse. And this is a very important video because this will end the 18 year journey of Rahu. As we know, Rahu Ketu stays in one sign for 18 year, uh, for 18 months. I mean, sorry. So, there you go if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation regarding this transit of rahu ketu which is going to happen in the sign of gemini and sagittarius respectively then you can go to my website to book a reading you will find the link to the website down in the description section and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay so now uh, what happens is we have to understand what Rahu and Ketu are. Then we can understand what eclipses are. So recently I had done a webinar with a lady. Uh, so I, it was a very long webinar. It was exclusively on Rahu and Ketu. It was almost for three hours near about. So I have uh, many people had requested me for that webinar. So i have uh, linked it on my website so it's available for purchase it's for around three hours so you can go to my website in the webinar section you will find the link to that also down so if you are interested you can uh, have that webinar also and that's all if you want you can so there you will understand what rahu ketu is in detail but here what i would like to say is Rahu is that which has the power to eclipse the sun and moon. But the question is, why does he do that? Why does Rahu and Ketu do that? Because it shows that what sun and moon are basically. We, sun shows our independent existence in this world. And moon shows how we feel about our existence. One is the existence, the very existence. And the other is the feeling. So it's like saying, what do you have? Suppose you have a kingdom. That's the sun. How big is your kingdom? That sun. Everybody is a king actually in this world. <laughs> Why? Because everybody has a control over certain things. A king is somebody who has a lot of control. So you might not be the king of a country. But you are still the king for your own mobile phone. You can do whatever you want with that mobile phone. Nobody is going to ask you. Maybe your parents could ask or your husband or your wife. But generally, they may not ask. Maybe you are the king for your laptop. You are the king for your car. That's like your territory. Okay. And moon represents, now you have the territory. But how do you feel about it? Do you like it or you don't like it? So that's what sun and moon represent. They are the fundamental planets which deal with our existence of this world. Okay. So they are very important to study in astrology. And then there is Rahu Ketu. They eclipse. Eclipse means they try to influence the sun and moon by what they think is right and what they think is wrong. So whenever Rahu eclipses the sun or moon, what happens is 
Rahu is what basically our past life desires. So now in our existence and how we feel about our existence, sun and moon, Rahu has the power to invest desires. Now you understand why after finishing something you always get another desire. It is because of the eclipse. Therefore, now you know why Rahu Ketu goes retrograde. Because going retrograde means what? At a astrological level we know. But what do you understand when you say you know, that that planet is always retrograde? It's not like Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn or Mars which time to time keep going retrograde and they again go direct. It's not like that. It is like the sun and moon which are always direct. So Rahu Ketu are always retrograde. Okay. So what, what does it mean? It means that they are going back into our lifetimes. They are bringing the desires and the sins and the inclinations from our past lives. And when there is an eclipse, Rahu has the power to put it over the sun and moon, which is our existence. So suppose you got a car and there's an eclipse, then you get the desire to get a new car. <laughs> You're married, but suppose there's an eclipse uh, related to Rahu in the seventh house, then you might get a desire that, oh my God, why should I stay with this lady or this person? Yes, I need somebody else. That can happen when Rahu transits the seventh house. Now you understand why it will not happen unless Rahu and Ketu are able to affect our existence, which is sun and our feeling about the existence, which is moon. So when Rahu is linked with sun, we get a desire. Sun means when Rahu is linked to sun in the eclipse. Okay, so which means when Rahu, Ketu and sun are together, that's the new moon, that's the Amavasya which will happen somewhere in June or July, I guess, this year, in Gemini, of course. So, during that time, what happens is, we want that, that desire which we have manifests in our physical existence, externally, that's what the sun is. But when Rahu is linked with the moon, which is in this case for 20th, then what happens is, Rahu wants to bring those desires, not externally, but at a mental level so that we feel them. So, now what has happened is, September 2017, I guess, Rahu had entered, September or August, depending on you take two nodes or me nodes, Rahu had entered the sign of Cancer from the sign of Leo. So, during the time when Rahu was in Leo, we saw people, they were very much obsessed with physically transforming the world with personalities who are like very masculine, like for example, Donald Trump. He's one character which came into prominence during that time. So that's what, that's like physically you impose your authority, your power, your dominance. Yes. Later on what happens, you know, that's, that's history. We all know that uh, big, big leaders have given some statements, especially Donald Trump. He had said, I guess, that we will make Mexico build the wall. But I don't know where the wall is. Recently, I saw an article that. Uh, maybe a reporter had asked him that what about the wall then he said something else so forget it so that's what Rahu does basically so Rahu puts an illusion to sun that now the sun feels that oh my god now we have to bring things on an external level our existence is under question okay and then what moon is moon is very feeling based okay I have my own I have my territory but what do I feel inside so then September, Rahu went from Leo to Cancer. All right. So then, now that's the thing. Cancer is the sign which is ruled by Moon. So now, we got obsessed with bringing the traits from Cancer into the external world, which is like creating awareness about uh, emotions, creating awareness about females. Cancer is also about females. So there was this rise of the Me Too movement, which we had seen. Yes, that's one thing. And because Venus specifically deals with this. So when Venus was in Libra in retrograde motion, so that time we saw that this Me Too movement came out and many people started speaking. 
so now what rahu did in cancer i'll speak about ketu later so what rahu did in cancer is our feelings our what what we feel what we like what we identify what we love basically or what we fear that can also be there in cancer that's more of a scorpio thing but that's still there in cancer to some extent that fear that came out into the existence at a physical realm because that's what rahu does okay and what ketu does actually now ketu is a very interesting planet ketu is the planet which shows a flag basically so what is a flag whenever you see a flag what do you remember flag is nothing but a indication a symbol of a territory which is conquered so that means when you see the flag of india tiranga as they say <laughs> you know that it is the flag of a nation which is uh, having so many people but irrespective of the population it is a country which is having some rules some set of laws and regulations all right if you see the uh, flag of united states of america then also you get the same feeling or of any organization then you know that this is like a boundary which is under control of somebody so that's what ketu is but the problem with this world is nothing is actually ours everything is ultimately god's property because lord krishna says in gita bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shanti mrutchati yaidam paramam guyam <laughs> there are many shlokas which says this that and uh, there are also statements in the scriptures which says that you know, lord vishnu is the ananta koti brahmand nayak he is the undisputed uh, emperor of all the worlds that exist so any territory which we conquer is actually an illusion because nothing is ours so imagine ketu is like alexander the great or babar or alauddin khilji or whoever or maybe hitler adolf hitler or joseph stalin <laughs> was he joseph or somebody else i forgot anyways so these great or apparently so called great conquerors or i would say murderers <laughs> yes these are these are names of the biggest murderers in history right these people who i just said so these great conquerors they thought that we have conquered so much we have we have done what not yes we have done everything but then what happens one day you perish one day you die so then what happens is suppose you conquer the whole universe and suddenly you die and you get up one day and you are like oh my god <laughs> nothing is mine imagine suddenly you thought that you are married to somebody you have a beautiful wife you have a great husband or you have nice kids they are saying mama papa chacha chachi <laughs> and imagine yourself coming out from your body think think of like a you know out of body experience ghostly or a ghastly experience i would say imagine you are coming out of this body and you are seeing yourself you are seeing everybody else and suddenly you realize that oh i am not there in this body anymore which means i am dead so then what happens you are tormented by the feeling that okay you know i thought they were mine <laughs> like whenever people get married or they get engaged they will always write you see nowadays there are many pre wedding photo shoots which i keep seeing in facebook so in that you will see people they will write he is mine she is mine <laughs> well that's the funny thing nobody is actually yours you don't own anything you are just as part of your karma temporarily you are owning something for very short time you are the caretaker of this girl of this man of this car of this home one day you will be stripped off of everything so that's what lord krishna says in the gita na antakale cha maam eva smaran muktwa kale varam the thing that you remember at the end of your life that will decide your next birth all right so that's the feeling of ketu therefore when ketu gets activated sometimes people say we feel headless because it's like a person who has died so 
you come out of your body and you keep seeing all these things oh my wife is there my husband is there but they seem to be not available for me yes during ketu dasha you will feel in the, even in antar dasha you will feel that everything is there around you depending on your horoscope but still it feels as if they are not there that's exactly like the time of death when you think everybody is there but nobody is there everything is gone <laughs> Okay so when ketu comes into capricorn this dynamics can play in the sign of capricorn okay capricorn is what basically going to the outer world and exerting yourself to the fullest because it is the sign ruled by saturn but primarily it is the exaltation sign of mars and mars ketu was also conjunct in capricorn so in the last you know the entire summer went like this literally the crazy time <laughs> so during mars ketu's conjunction we could see that we want to exert ourselves completely in a headless manner even after knowing that we are fighting a lost battle so this is how ketu behaves in capricorn depending on your chart of course what planets you have in capricorn and cancer and now what is happening rahu march is going to enter rahu ketu are going to change signs all right rahu will go from cancer to gemini and ketu will go and join saturn in the sign of sagittarius wow what a time it is beautiful time for spirituality now before that happens this is the time the eclipse is there so now whatever rahu has been doing from last 18 months all right so now during the time of this eclipse it will try to exert itself to the fullest on on to moon not to sun because rahu is closely conjunct with the moon so because of this what will happen is whatever happened in the last 18 months related to the houses wherever rahu and ketu are transiting that means wherever capricorn and cancer is falling in our chart that axis 5 11 axis 4 10 axis 17 axis 39 axis regulated to that now we will feel very intensely because moon is the planet which shows the feeling that we get in this existence so now is the time that we need to sit and meditate and contemplate on the actions that we had taken from the last 18 months there are many things which we accomplished which we failed <laughs> there are many battles that we conquered but yet we felt that the battle was useless the victory was useless it's like a headless victory you see because uttarashada nakshatra where ketu is relating that is also the nakshatra which deals with the declaration of victory so it's like declaring a headless victory declaring a victory after dying it's like a dying man declaring that oh you know you are still mine <laughs> so and then rahu was in pushya nakshatra and now it has moved to punarvasu so now is the time when we need to sit back and contemplate and take a pen and paper and write down whatever happened and try to analyze that you will always see that when you do this with rahu ketu especially you will see that you will understand that before rahu had entered cancer when rahu was in leo maybe we are not thinking like this but the moment rahu entered cancer and last uh, february when the eclipse was there yes last february there was an eclipse right last year february in this same cancer capricorn axis so that time from then till now especially this last one year there are many things which you might have not planned earlier but you planned instinctively during that time last year february many things came into completion and many new projects began and during these 18 months you saw your own self and what you are good at basically which place you should be working that is a big lesson which people have got i have seen many people have changed careers because they feel that the career zone which is capricorn because capricorn is the original 10th house of karma primarily 
that is like a land which a dead man has conquered so it's like you feel that oh this is my area i know everything but you don't know <laughs> that's the beauty of ketu in capricorn so ketu tells you that look you thought this is the place of your work but maybe now you should start your own business or you should stop your business and join job these kind of things can happen or could have happened i mean okay so primarily this is a time of inner reflection and trying to contemplate to see that whatever we thought we will accomplish maybe some of them we have accomplished and some of them we have not but ultimately we have to ask ourselves did it make us happy are you are you happy just you ask this question to yourself this eclipse is a perfect time to ask this because this is happening in cancer which is the sign ruled by moon okay so it's the best day to ask yourself are you happy in life if the answer is mm, bit dicey then <laughs> you know it's no <laughs> of course that doesn't mean that everybody will be always happy and they're giggling smiling dancing laughing that will never happen because lord krishna says in gita dukhalayam ashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata that this material world is a place of misery that's what is said by lord krishna this i am not telling lord krishna is telling so it is not possible to be happy on a material level for a long time in this material world even if you are happy because the soul is satchit ananda it is searching for eternal spiritual bliss it will always hanker for things which matter cannot satisfy so now is the time because cancer is also the exaltation sign of jupiter that we do mantras we do spiritual practices we read scriptures like the shrimad bhagavatam yes specifically shrimad bhagavatam and we can also chant this mantra om namo bhagavate vasudevaya this will be very good because this deals with lord krishna who is linked with the moon directly he is the avatar for the planet moon vishnu avatar i mean so these are things we can do we can give donations especially to cows yes because cancer also represents the cow of course i mean the sign taurus represents it by the diagram but cancer also shows the cow because the cow is like the mother who nourishes you selflessly so these are the things we can do we can donate to centers where cows are being protected from slaughter that's what we can do goshalas and anybody who is uh, helping people to become more spiritual we can also donate to them financially all right or we can help them or we can assist them in some way whichever way it is possible so the day of eclipse is perfect to sit and ask these questions to yourself am i happy if yes then good great if no then what do i need to do to become more happier in this world with doing spiritual practices all right happiness doesn't mean that you just go on jumping from one job to an another business from one person to the other person no that doesn't make you happy that just gives you some pleasure but happiness will come on the level of the soul for that we need to do spiritual practices read the scriptures do chant mantras and visit holy places and meet spiritual personalities join a spiritual community center within our city town or village so doing all these things will definitely give us a yes to that question all right and until that time the answer will always be yeah i am okay maybe happy not so much you know frustrated basically as krishna says in the gita manashasthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati the person the living entity is working like mad animals you know manashasthani indriyani the indriyas the senses are driving the person mad crazy i want this i want that ye chahiye wo chahiye prakriti sthani karshati karshati means you are working you know you are working 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 24 hours prakriti the the material nature that's making you work all right so there you go if you are interested in knowing what this eclipse will do to you 
and uh, what the transit of rahu ketu in the signs of gemini and sagittarius will do to the and if you also want to have the webinar on rahu ketu which i did then also you can go to my website down in the link uh, you will find it in the description section okay until next time god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay bye bye see you